in the meantime. So anyway, that en since that ends the game, we're going to talk about my welcome to my favorite part, which is the part where I, now that we've beaten Shenzhen three and talked about all the th and we've um, seen all it has to, all the things, I can actually talk about how I felt about playing the game and what I really a little mini review about how I felt how. A mini, little mini review of the game too, because I did this for Shenzhen One and Two, and I'm also be kind of referring back to Shenzhen One and Two sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> more Chinese games so fun. I, I'll talk about like what's gonna come up after this game. Now that this game has come to an end, and it was a lot of fun. There were some not so fun parts, but at least there were some things. Anyway, so first things first is like. Um, this game came out in let's see what they what's the year it came out. It came out in 2004, for, from what I remember. So it's actually like came out around the time of uh, I think Final Fan like it was a little after Final Fantasy X. So this is during the PS2 era. And um, I guess let me get through and first we'll go. Usually how I go with these kind with games like this in particular is like I usually cover graphics. Sound, gameplay, and uh, story. Like, not usually in that, not always in that order, but anyway, so first let's talk about a little bit about the story and like how I felt about the story. I will say that, I mean, okay, this is definitely an improvement over Shenzhen 2 for sure. Shenzhen 2 was, oh my gosh, there was a lot of like not so great things about that story and in comparison this is this game felt like they were more focused like it for like it didn't feel as sloppy but i think i feel like this is sort of tying into graphical presentation but like i'm gonna my caveat about the game is like a lot of the moments are sort of like sometimes it was really hard to tell what was kind of was going on in the fmvs because the graphics were so blocky and polygonal, you were like, what just happened? I don't know. It was a very PlayStation 1 kind of thing. Right, I understand that. Like, that's the... I know that they were... There's some... There was some development issue. Like, there's not an issue on this one. Shenzhen 3 was more unified. It feels like a more unified vision compared to Shenzhen 2, which is... The, there's. It's a very well-documented fact that the two creators could not agree on the direction. And it was just... It just became kind of a mess. Where Shenzhen 3 was a lot more, it felt more solid. But anyway, one thing I did, I I liked about the the story had a lot of, em, still had some very strong emotional parts, and there was a lot of surprises, especially since the theme of this game is very connected to, like your life and your past life. But in a way, it's also sort of saying that you're not your past life either, and like how the difference between the god general that Jing Tian was compared to the Jing Tian of now, who's a much more happy guy who doesn't like who doesn't actually want to fight all that much. The god general was his god general past life was a very like I love fighting, I just like I just wanna beat the crap up. I just like fighting Chong Lo and it was it's a grand old time, but later on like but this Jing Tian is a more peaceful guy. So it's just interesting how even things have changed from life to life. And like it's it's really interesting and like it remind me a lot of like there's a game called Tales of Innocence that also kind of touches on those themes and it was really interesting to find out about who Jing Tian was. It was kind of it was kind of weird. They actually one of the things I was really missing is that they didn't do any like like a lot of it is told through text, but you don't see a real flash really a real flashback of like who Jing Tian was like before and I actually was really curious that I wish I wanted to know more about how things happen what he was like before compared to so I could compare it to now and I'm kind of sad that they didn't really touch on that too much you only saw a little FMV with his god general form early so I actually had a voice planned for that form but I couldn't use it because they never did a flashback there's also like um and I think, and I think, like for the most part, like it was, like I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I think, even thinking thinking back on it, I still 
feel like I like Shin Jin One's story the best in terms of the series. I, in terms of this series in particular, like I loved Shin Jin One story. But I I know I'm making a comparison. I really I shouldn't, but they're two different stories. But I felt like that one was a bit tighter. Like there was a lot more chances to really feel for the characters. And this one you sort of had it, but like to Shen's like little sac like sacrifice at the end is kind of like. Well, she kind of decided right there, and you're kind of not. There's kind of not really much of a build-up, but you, I guess it happens, and it's kind of sad. But it's not the. I don't know if it was built up that great. Like there were some things that kind of they were kind of rushed through, and you know, one other thing is like there's some loose ends too, especially like with. Um, oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I didn't know that. The game doesn't tell you about that either. So there's also the whole like part with uh, Xue Jin and her that other like her family, and it sort that sort of peters out, and like you really don't see like remember her her like relative that was like douchey and tried to take over the manor. Yeah, that kind of doesn't matter anymore after a certain point. I was just like they had a portrait for him. I guess they was he was gonna be nice and important, but. He stopped. We never see him again. And they were just like, huh? <laughs> what the heck? I see the fact that I haven't seen him again in the rest of the game. I don't even remember his name, too. Yeah, that terror, that jerk of a relative that tried to take over the Thong family. I know, it's like weird. Uh, I do think, and they don't kind of don't address um, Chang Xing's, like, like, see, Changqing hates all monsters, and sometimes there there's these moments where he, it almost, like, he can, he almost does something very unthinkable, terrible, because he can't trust any monster, but they don't cover it either. One thing I liked about Shenzhen 1, okay, without spo with some spoilers coming up, is that they address the fact that not all people... Like a certain people of a certain realm aren't all bad or aren't all good either. Like people in the god realm are not all good, and people in the demon realm are not all bad. And like they touched Shenzhen one and Shenzhen two really touched on it. And I felt like it wasn't done. They didn't really do that in Shenzhen three as much. It's more sort of like kind of like waved over. And I'm a little bit sad that they did not do that. Like because I feel like. For one thing, Shenzhen is all about, like, in a way, it's like pointing out, like, racial prejudice. And, like, how prejudice is a terrible thing, and, like, it causes so many problems. And, like, I'm kind of sad they didn't really do in this one, but, well. Um, otherwise, like, the... Um, I do think it's still very solid. There isn't, like... Yeah, I still... Like, it was still fun to watch. Like, I, I think what makes the game made the game's story fun to go through was that the characters were very fun like we had of course we have Xue Jian and Xiao Kui and of course Jing Tian who are all very awesome interesting characters on their own and we had the mysterious Zi Xuan and uh, we had Chang Qing to kind of like like Zi Xuan to anchor people down and Chang Qing to kind of like be the voice of guidance and but sometimes it's not oh really Fei Peng <laughs> Yeah, I think the characters made, like, the story was okay, like, in the end, I think the story is just alright. It's serviceable for an RPG, there's not, like, there's not too many, like, there are some really interesting moments, like, the moment you discover about Zi Xuan's identity, and, like, I feel like that was one of the more powerful moments where you're like, oh, shoot, this is Zi Xuan, so that's who she is, and you know about her real identity, and who she really is, and that was really cool. And like just the in, the character interaction, so it's in a way it's almost like a Tales game. <laughs> Tales is also known as like the stories are okay, but the it, character interactions are the most fun part. And so there wasn't too many like whoa weird things. It's just like a lot of like a lot of it's just character interaction. That's half the fun of it. And so I will say that story is like it's all right. It's pretty good, but it's it's serviceable for an RPG. But I like I liked this character interactions, and I liked having the morality choice in the to choose which character to sacrifice because that's a really tough one and you feel really bad for whichever girl you decided to sacrifice though 
I guess in the end you can get them all back anyway, thanks to Chonglo and his. So Chonglo's not the Chonglo's an interesting character. I really like Chonglo. I'll be honest, he's cool. I really liked him. And like he's a very like surprisingly likable villain. I'm mean, like normally you're supposed to hate a hate like an antagonist, but in a way he's almost not really an antagonist. And your fight with him is just sort of like I just wanted to settle like this thing out and like make and like because that's all he wanted really. And like I'm sad that he Zhen is gone. I think Zhen is the only is the, re the real casualty. But you can't. She even says it herself. Like she. Like, I lived so long already at this point. Like, I'm okay with this. I've already cheated death long enough, and it's time for me to do what I needed to do. And that was like the first, when she, that was like kind of like a moment where you felt like, I see, okay, you know what? It is a strong moment. I think that it was a pretty strong moment when she finally says like, you know what? I've been putting this off for too long. I can finally do something that's useful. And so she sac she willingly sacrificed herself for to save to help Chang like to help Changqing like with and because she's like he's he's right, I should be helping people. What am I doing? I know the music makes for good discussion music. So I give the story pretty good. Pretty good. Not as good as Shenzhen 1, better than Shenzhen 2. Character development's awesome. That's about it. About it. So we'll go to graphics now. I will say that graphics, I feel like this game, I miss the 2D sprites. I've never said, like, Shenzhen 1 and 2 had beautiful sprites to work with, and you could see clearly what was going on, and, like, it gave the game a lot of character. And in comparison, the 3D models are really, really bland. And, like... Oh yeah, by the way, that's a quote from Xue Jie, uh, Xue Jie Zixian, when she said like, I was moved, like, yes, that's basically her most powerful moment. It's sort of like an end, like kind of like a way to end like that cycle she was going through. So, yeah, I, the chippy style is cool, but uh, there's no mouths and the polygons, you couldn't tell what was going on. I talked about, I touched it briefly, but even things like you... Yeah, they just clash with the portraits. That's one problem I didn't like, is that the portraits had so much like interesting detail and then the chibi mo 3D models did not. It was just like, it felt like I was watching, like it was like a slightly higher resolution PlayStation game. And I've seen even PlayStation games with at a lower resolution with better ways of like showing, expressing things expressing like characters and places i wasn't a big fan of like this switch and i feel like it does the game a huge disservice because like i think the f the ones that suffer the most are the fmvs because um sorry just drinking water oh give me a second i'm gonna do something change something yeah it was yeah it was 2d art versus 3d art and then you the 3d models just don't like they're not up to par with the how awesome like the portraits were and i really miss that too and like i feel like i think the worst part is not only that the 3d art was not is really not that great looking like really not even for this era this is the era of final fantasy 10 so in terms of like actual technology it was kind of behind it was like playstation 1 when PlayStation 2 was out already. But it made it hard to tell what was going on in the cutscenes. And like, it looked, it didn't look great. And it, it's just sad that that we had to see like, so just the graphical presentation was kind of like, unfelt like sloppy, sloppy at best, eh, sloppy at best. And I think like, that's probably my biggest problem with the graphics. And I recognize that like in the Chinese, industry game industry at the time like this was like they were just starting to get kind of get their foothold into 3d but 
it just feels it was dated. I, I think the worst part is just that it was unclear. A lot of games in this style were <laughs> suffer from the same problem to it. Final Fantasy VII. Anyway, so I was really not a big fan of like the transition, and I know and later games I think. Where like although they didn't look that great yet, at least later games were a bit better about doing this. So like four, like the difference between this game and four, which we will see play later, probably later in like I don't know if this year, but maybe next year. I don't know. <laughs> but um, let me think. Anything else I wanted to say about graphics? I think the only other thing is like, this is is this related to graphics? No, I'll, I'll ch cover that in a little bit. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that sound is pretty good. Like the music is great, of course, as always. Even Shenzhen 2, with its like lackluster story, had great music, and like this game is no exception to the trend of having great music. I mean, we're listening to it right now. <laughs> like it's a very romantic Chinese style, as iconic. It's almost iconic in, for this se series in particular, and like. It's like all the there's a lot of great tracks. I feel like the only thing it's this game really suffers from is the fact that yeah, I know that's not like I'm just gonna make mention of that. The only thing I need to mention is that the sound effects are kind of mm, like I like the fact that all the characters here you see all of them all five of them have their own unique sound effects, and like that was that's that's good to kind of give everyone character. What I didn't like was the fact that one. The end, there's a lot of recycled sound effects for the enemies in particular and I think the worst offender is that bosses did not have their own flinching sound so when Chong Lo was attacking or getting attacked he made the same sound as every male um, enemy and it was just really guys really you're not even gonna make your enemies unique like that's so that felt lazy. I know it's not probably not because they were lazy, but it just feels un unpolished. It feels placeholder, and I was very unimpressed about that. I think the other thing I was unimpressed about was the fact that the boss, like okay, there's the boss, the final boss theme. That was a huge disappointment. I'm like, this is supposed to be an epic fight. They've been building up to Shenzhen versus not Shenzhen. Whoops, wrong person. Uh, Jing Tian versus Chong Lo for. Ever through the whole story, and you finally get to the top, get to that top of that tower. You're ready to go mano a mano with your epic rival, and they give you boring old boss music. And it was just like <sighs> such a wasted, dramatic opportunity. Ah, that's the single biggest disappointment in terms of music in this game. Like, I don't care, everyone else, all the previous bosses had their own mu- had different music, fine. But Chong Lo, the final boss, the epic struggle, and that's how it ends. And you're just like, really? So that's kind of a disappointment. But at least the rest of the music is good. <laughs> the towns all have their own in nice music too. And like, yes, if you want the soundtrack, uh, she's going to post a video and I will also repost it. And like, yeah, that's, that's basically all it. At least with Shenzhen, you always know the sound direction is always going to be very great. And like, I'm really happy that for the most part, the sound was good. Okay, now here we are on to my favorite part to talk about is the gameplay. Which is like, I guess like, gameplay has always been Shenzhen ser the Shenzhen series biggest like Achilles heel in my opinion. Like, it's never been known to have the most innovative gameplay. And, um, like, at least with Shenzhen 1 and 2, it was basically Dragon Quest. And, uh, I mean, they are often they're carried a lot by their, by the story writing and the quality of the writing. Shenzhen 3 Remake for PS4. See, here's the thing, if they actually remade this game in, like, really... High graphics, oh my gosh, the people would go nuts. This would like actually stand out a lot. However, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec, about that a little later. So Shenzhen 3's battle system takes a lot from Grandia, as she, Illusion correctly points out. So one of the nice things, at least they tried to change the battle system up this time, and they make it so that you can interrupt spells 
and you the order goes but I don't know I feel like a lot of times you needed to memorize exactly when an animation would finish so it it was very very strange I mean you kind of get used to it oh you're gonna go back to sleep okay good night coffee thanks for stopping by okay so as I was saying the bow system eh, it's all right it it's simple enough I think with the final boss, it's kind of weird you have to do one on one, so you couldn't really use the full battle system. You only had to. You were basically blocking the fan, blocking the fan, heal up, make sure you don't die. And, um. And good night, coffee. Thank you for, stop, for stopping by. And thank you for the well wishes. So you were just like stopping, stopping the fan, stopping the fan. It was kind of. Uh, really? I think. And grinding that. That hour of grinding was kind of lame too, but. I mean, that's not the worst thing I've ever had to go through. It's just that it's just you have to do it by yourself. I think I would have preferred if I could have grinded with all four of my friends. All four party, four party members. I've been like, okay, we're just grinding. We're just having a good time. We're just blowing things up and rain rain destruction on everything. But instead, you have to fight with Jing Tian by himself. And it looks it's just so anticlimactic compared to the rest of the game where you're like rearing up and you're building up these party members. And ultimately... These three don't matter. Only this man does. And it's kind of lame. I was like, really? That's poor. That's really weird. I feel like it's really bad. And it's like... I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know what they were thinking. I understand they wanted an epic duel, but I felt like they kind of forced it. And I was like, it's not necessary. But anyway, uh, let me think. What else I wanted to say? Yeah, so one thing about this game is that... I feel like the game, the gameplay is probably the worst part of the game. It's probably one of the worst parts of the game. One thing I wanted to point out is that the camera is so bad. Oh, it's Zeno. It's a little easy. It's okay. I will say it's better than Zeno Gears. It's a lot easier to control, and it's a lot easier to. It doesn't go. It's but there are things like. Things in the world blocking the 3D cam the camera, so you can't see. There's like, oh, it gets like it was so annoying to get with, go deal with. I think the other thing I want to mention is that I've mentioned this multiple times on the stream, but the control, the control, of the game is so bad. <laughs> Like, I think the worst part is that you get, s there's a lot of times where your character can get stuck in the most inexplicable places. You don't know why. The collision detections in everything was really terrible. So like, you're fighting the controls half the time. You're fortunate that you have, if you had a, mo a mouse like mine, or a keyboard like mine, it was okay, but ugh. It was one of the worst things to go through. I think that probably made the game a lot less more fun, less fun than it would have been otherwise. Cause I love exploring the world. I just hate dealing with bad controls. And like, like the controls in Shenzhen 1 and 2 were not perfect, but at least Shenzhen 2 fixed a lot of the control issues. I actually don't have a problem with that game in particular because it actually controlled very well. It was a very fixed camera, you could move around, it was very clear where you needed to go. Whereas Shenzhen 3, you had things you couldn't tell where things were, like where where was a walkable place, you couldn't move very well, and like you couldn't run away very well. So and the worst part is like stupid things like climbing on ladder on ropes. Once you click on the rope, you're gonna climb it all the way up, even if you didn't want to. You can't climb all the. And then if you you're like, oh crap, I didn't want to climb the rope. Yeah, I think stairs and narrow spaces was the worst part of it, and I think getting stuck on things was a little terrible. Like I, this is like it's almost unacceptable, but it's you can work with it, but. Just because you can work with it doesn't mean you have to accept it. I guess some people are like, oh, it's okay. Yeah, going in and out of the same doors, that was also really annoying too. Like, this game is a controlled disaster for the most part. It's fortunate that this isn't like an uh, action RPG or else it'd be like, it would be terrible. The other thing to mention is that this game is supremely buggy on my computer. And I don't know, like... 
I know that on certain computers it is not buggy. On some computers it is buggy, and it's this, that's the crazy part. This is 1.04. This is the newest patch too. So, I think one of the most famous thing on the Chinese boards is the fact that the good ending is bugged. Don't you love it, guys? When Bink it just breaks the game. I love it when Bink video crashes the game, so you can't watch it all the way through. Hooray for bugs. There's so many graphical glitches, whether it be like Axis not working very well, or you've seen the famous Shijian sabers where they're like, Whee! It's like a light, it's light across the, the screen. It's so beautiful, so dazzling, so buggy. Although it actually was, did look cool looking, even though it didn't actually add additional power to you, but it just, it was glitchy, but it was kind of funny in a way. It's a moment of levity. <laughs> oh, this game's so glitchy. So many glitches. So I think that's one of the other things is that the, there's a lot of bugs and it kind of makes the game feel a little bit put together. I don't know why. The bad ending? No. I don't think it's like... I don't know why. The bad ending is fine. The video is fine. You didn't have it like yeah illusions didn't have any battle glitches so it could also be that maybe this but i know a lot of people were oh shalke runs backwards when you enter talisman video yeah this is so silly they're just really silly glitches i honest, honestly they're not like none of them are game breaking it's just really fit. it just looks a little it looks a little bit sloppier but i think the weapon glitches are the sloppiest things the rest are just funny little things that like you can tell like I feel like from what I remember reading is like a lot in the Chinese boards I was not the only person to go through these some of these glitches like it's actually this game is actually infamous for having a lot of bugs and but people the general opinion like okay just to as a side the general opinion is actually that this game is decent except that the bugs are kind of lame or some of the bugs especially the crashing ending they're like despite the cra ending crashing it is still a decent game you want my battle glitches with the lightsabers? I actually kind of like the lightsabers. It's not a thing about. You know what? That's actually a glitch that's actually funny. Purple laser guns. I think the only thing I don't like is the fact that axes don't work. I'm not. I'm a little bit annoyed about that. But yeah, the axes are glitched in my game. I feel like it also. I wonder if it's because if anyone uses a not Nvidia card, maybe that's why. I don't know. This is this computer itself is running about is running on an Intel, so I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just a thing where it doesn't run well on non-NVIDIA graphics cards. But anyway, that's kind of a ding against the game in terms of like it should be a consistent experience, but at least the, the glitches are not game breaking. It's only the ending that I'm kind of annoyed about, and I'm gonna dock I would dock points for that immediately. <laughs> I was like, an ending that can crash your game. I love it. Yeah, it's the crash is happening because of the video, so it's not because of the. It's actually surprisingly not the game itself. It's just that the videos causes Bink to crash. Uh, Bink is a video uh, codec form codec format. If you look it up, you can find it. It's used by many games, including this one and other in Japanese games and American games as well. So it's not because it's a Chinese technology. It's a universal technology. Uh, anything else I wanted to talk about gameplay? I will applaud this game that the pacing is actually pretty good. I like the fact that the dungeons are not... I feel like the dungeons were the perfect size for what they needed to be. They were just... I think the worst part is just navigating. Yeah, I don't know. Like, apparently this is... No, I read about it before that the ending is bugged for a lot of people. And I wonder if it's because... I don't know, Bink video... It crashes Bink and it, I don't know why either. I was gonna say like... For the most part, the dungeon pacing and length is actually, I would actually say it's pretty good. Like it's actually lo just long enough to feel like a dungeon, but not too long where you felt like it was a chore. I think the only one that was longer than normal was the locked monster tower. I think that's probably the worst dungeon. <laughs> it's one of the worst dungeons only because it just takes getting through some of, turning, doing the mechanisms and doing them take forever. And I think it's just slow. And I feel like that's probably the weakest dungeon in terms of like 
how feel. The other dungeons are okay. You can walk through them pretty quickly. I think the only ones I don't like are the poison dungeons. They're a pain in the butt. And I wish you could zoom the mini-map out as well. I think that's one of, one of my complaints is that the mini-map is too zoomed in. And I wish you could zoom it out so you could see more of the map as you went. And I felt like it wasn't zoomed out enough. So it's super easy to get lost. And that's not very good. I feel like that was one other thing I didn't like. The mini-map. It should have been very useful, but it was very small. It was too zoomed in. Uh, anything else I wanted to mention about gameplay? Um, uh, yeah? Meow? <laughs> no, no, no kitties here. There are no cats. Um, yeah, other than the camera, I talked about camera, I talked about controls. I talked about the mini-map. The dungeon link's pretty good. The final dungeon, grinding the hour was not so fun, but at least it's not the fu the grinding for an hour is not the worst thing I've ever done. So I will, it was kind of boring, but at least I had you guys to entertain me. <laughs> is there anything else? Yeah, that's I think that's it for gameplay. I think I covered all of it. I already discussed about at great length about the other things. So in the end, what do I think about the game? Would I recommend it to someone who, to someone? I'm kind of leaning towards, like, it depends. Because, like, if you're a hardcore RPG person, you can totally get through this game. Like, you can figure it out. Like, if I can figure it out, you can too. So it's not a very diff- Honestly, like, for the most part, it's not too difficult if you make the proper preparations. I showed you that the level 70 boss can be defeated. The final boss, Chonglo, can be defeated at level 70, so it's not the hardest thing you can game I've ever played. You do have to keep up with levels, so but generally if you're good about keeping your levels up and fighting a lot, then you'll be fine. The, the fighting is a bit of a slog, can get a little bit of a slog sometimes, but I mean generally it's still interesting enough to go through it. It's, yeah, this, like the game just needs, like the game's fine to play through. And I think, like, if you're an RPG person, you'll really, I think you can, you can appreciate it. At least the story is the one thing that can drive you. And, like, there's one or two slow parts, but for the most part, there's always something interesting happening every single time. And, like, first you'll be like, what are, what, where are we going with this? But eventually you'll figure out, like, it'll kind of come to a head. And it, it kind of, it will all work out in the end. Uh, the other, other thing to mention, like, if you are not an RPG game, a big RPG person, you might get put off by the control and the camera issues, and like feel like that's probably gonna hamper your enjoyment of it. If you're loose to fluid bayonetta-like controls, this is probably not the game for you, because it you do not move like bayonetta in this game. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. I would recommend it to anyone who plays RPGs. For others, maybe you might want to play on something a little easier. For You might want to play on some, something else that's a little more accessible. In fact, that might be... Yeah. I will talk about that in a second. You have to wonder... Yeah, Chonglo brought Xiao Kui and had both, had both personalities. So there are two Xiao Kuis. It's a little weird, isn't it? That was nice of him though. It made a happy ending, so it actually worked out for everyone. So at least this is this game is not completely sad. Only one real person actually in the end died. And like I don't know, I don't feel too I felt I was like I'm happy that she did that. But I don't know if I feel too sad that she died. More like she was sort of living on borrowed time to begin with, so it's sort of like, ah, eh, you've already had three lifetimes. Jeez, woman. <laughs> anyway. What was I going to say again? So, yeah. Overall, enjoyable experience. Much better than, much more fun than Shenzhen 2. Much better as a game. Eh, much better than Shenzhen 2 in terms of enjoyment. Not quite Shenzhen 1, but... Yeah, she was fighting her destiny, and it was basically like, you're living on borrowed time, let's be honest. The, at least you decide to make amends for all that stuff. Anyway, we can. I think that's pretty much all we can talk about for Zishen. I mean, we've already discussed it at great length. So, yeah, that's how I felt about the game. I hope you guys, hopefully, 
you guys found this playthrough uh, useful, and I hope I'll get all this onto YouTube eventually. I think the problem with Shenzhen 2 at this time is still not on YouTube, and I think it's really hard to get it on YouTube because the Twitch, as of this moment, the Twitch exporter is, the Twitch YouTube exporter is completely busted for old videos, so I can't even upload it. Anyway, um, hope you guys enjoyed it. This is going to be our, this is, this was a fun game, and hopefully we can play more in the series in the future.